Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Thank you so much for clicking on the video. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys a God tier faith tank build that's going to make your playthrough effortless. You are never going to die. You're going to be very hard to kill and you're going to be doing lots and lots of fire damage. Before we get into the video, here's a quick shout out to our sponsor, AOA.com. If you don't want to grind for items or runes and you want items real quick, you can get it here using the link in the description below and use my code COLD for 3% off. My goal with these guides is to equip you all with the best in slot items in Elden Ring to make your playthroughs as easy and effortless as possible. I use this particular tank faith build for my entire third playthrough of Elden Ring, and it was one of the easiest playthroughs I've ever had. It's obviously no surprise here, but we are wielding the Blasphemous Blade, one of the best weapons in Elden Ring, top three, definitely on par with the Moondale Katana and the Rivers of Blood. There are many faith weapons you can use on your faith builds, but nothing compares to the utter destruction that the Blasphemous Blade brings to any opponent in this game, whether it's a low level enemy or a boss, even one of the hardest bosses in the game, Millennia, that literally stood no chance. I walked into the boss fight thinking I was gonna get some type of challenge on my third playthrough, and it was literally the easiest confrontation I've ever had with Millennia. One hit from the Blasphemous Blade on this build, and she was down to the ground, wasn't even capable of attacking back. Not to mention, we are also using the Fingerprint Shield, the best shield in Elden Ring. If you have this equipped, fully maxed out, and with the right talismans, you will literally take no damage. This faith build has the best defense, the best offense, and one of the most simplistic approaches ever, making this one of the best faith builds in Elden Ring. So what I like to do in all of my build videos, I like to show you guys what these builds should look like at different level brackets in Elden Ring. So. We went ahead and took a trip over to Renala here, the Moon Queen, which is actually one of the main bosses in Elden Ring. Once you defeat her, she will give you a great rune that gives you the ability to respec your attributes. For anyone that is in the level 50 range, this is what your attributes could possibly look like. For Vigor, we have 20. Health is going to be very important for our survivability. We also have Mind at 20. I think Mind is important because we are going to be using the Blasphemous Blade skill a lot for this build. Endurance 15, Strength 20, this is a Strength and Faith build primarily, so you want to make sure Strength, Vigor, and Faith are your highest attributes. Dexterity 16, Intelligence 10, we have Faith at 20, and Arcane at 9. If you are in the level 100 range, well then maybe your attribute points are going to look something like this. For Vigor, I would recommend 35, again, Health is going to be extremely important. We have Mind at 25. Endurance at 20, Strength at 30, Dexterity at 16, Intelligence 10, Faith at 35, and Arcane at 9. If you are in the level 150 level bracket, then your attributes are going to look something like this. We have Vigor at 45. Again, it's the same trend, guys. We want Vigor, Strength, and Faith as our highest three attributes. So we have Vigor at 45, Mind 25, Endurance at 25, Strength at 50, Dexterity 16, Intelligence 10, Faith 50, and Arcane 9. Now, if you are pretty far in Elden Ring and you consider yourself a higher level character similar to me, currently I am level 227. I actually stopped leveling up a while ago. I wish I would have stopped around level 200, but 227 is fine. I'm not going to go any higher. But if we take a look at my attribute points here at level 227, we can see a similar trend, okay? We have Vigor at 60, Mind at 30, Endurance at 40. I bumped up my Endurance a bit because my character is carrying a pretty heavy load. We also have Strength at 69, almost 70, Dexterity 18, Intelligence 10, Faith at 70, and Arcane at 9. If you're wondering why you want Faith to be so high, well, Faith is going to determine how much damage this ability does and this is going to be your primary attack for this build strength is also going to increase our damage with our melee attacks and we're going to need a pretty good amount of strength to wield this fingerprint shield so like i mentioned our primary weapon the only weapon that you need to use on this build one of the best weapons in elden ring the blasphemous blade mine is fully maxed out plus 10 
the taker's flames is the ability that you were seeing in the footage it is definitely over tuned uh very very powerful and there's really no reason to use any other weapon this one is really just that good you can see here our physical attack power is 296 plus 199 we also do fire damage 191 plus 154 if we take a look at our attribute scaling here you can see that this weapon heavily favors faith but we also have c for strength and dexterity at c which makes this a great weapon whether you're going with strength or dexterity Keep in mind, attributes required to wield the Blasphemous Blade, you need at least 22 Strength, 15 Dexterity, and 21 Faith. The shield we are using here, the Heavy Fingerprint Stone Shield, mine is plus 25, fully maxed out. I will say this is one of the most annoying items to obtain an Elden Ring, but it is 110% worth it. I'm going to find the best video tutorial for you guys, so... If you want to get your hands on this, please take a look at the description below. But as you can see here, what makes this shield so powerful is the guard boost. Now, currently, our guard boost is at 89, okay? We also have a talisman on this build, the Great Shield Talisman, that is going to be buffing our guarding ability as well. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. 99% of the enemies that attack you in this game are not going to do any damage to you. You're not going to lose any stamina if you have this shield equipped, making it one of the best in-slot defensive items in Elden Ring. Be sure to bump up that strength, you guys, because you need at least 48 strength to wield this shield. But trust me, it's worth it. Now, we are going to be using incantations on this build because it is a faith build. I'm using the Erd Tree Seal plus 10. Mine is fully maxed out. For this particular seal, you need at least 40 faith to use it. So if you don't have the Erd Tree Seal yet, you can use any seal that you have. The Finger Seal is great. This is what I used for a pretty long time until I got my hands on the Erd Tree Seal. For the armor, we are using the Fingerprint Armor. So we have the Fingerprint Helm, the Fingerprint Armor, the Fingerprint Gauntlets, and the Fingerprint Greaves. This is easily one of the coolest armor sets in Elden Ring, but honestly, I would just go with something that gives you a decent amount of poise, you know, a decent amount of survivability. It's really a personal preference when it comes to the cosmetics of your character. Now, the talismans are actually very important. So, I already mentioned the Great Shield Talisman, which boosts guarding ability. This Great Shield Talisman is going to boost your guard boost from 89 to 99 on the Fingerprint Stone Shield, making it a great talisman to use for this setup. Since we have a heavy load, we have some pretty heavy armor, a heavy shield, heavy weapon, we want to use the Great Jars Arsenal, which vastly raises maximum equipment load. Also, the Phlox Canvas Talisman, one of the best talismans to use for faith builds, especially if your build focuses primarily on buffing your character up with incantations. The item effect here greatly raises the potency of incantations. And last but not least here, we have the Fire Scorpion Charm, which raises fire attack but lowers damage negation. The reason we want to raise our fire attack, I mean, we pretty much want to do anything we possibly can to buff up our blasphemous blade so the incantations on this build are very important because they're gonna allow you to do some serious damage to bosses as you can see here we're gonna be using golden vow we also have blessing of the Erd tree which is going to be buffing our damage giving us heals over time we also have flame grant me strength which increases our fire attack on top of the talisman we already have very very important we also have the Black Flames Protection, which is going to buff up our defense on top of all the defense we already have. As I mentioned, there's nothing better than a simplistic approach that's literally best in slot. I mean, this build is so easy to use, very effortless. There's not really too much going on. It's not super complicated, but it's super, super effective here. So just taking a deeper dive into each incantation that we are using. Again, we're not really using many, we only use these to buff up our character just to do more damage with our Blasphemous Blade. Again, it's a simplistic approach, you guys. So for Golden Vow, Golden Vow is going to increase our attack and defense, not just for ourselves, but for our allies as well. We have the Blessing of the Erd Tree, which grants greater blessings to self and nearby allies. We also have Flame Grant Me Strength, like I mentioned, which raises physical 
and fire affinity attack power again that fire affinity is going to be very important the black flames protection which increases physical damage negation and then the Erd tree heal we can use this whenever we want this is going to vastly heal hp for not just ourselves but for our allies as well so if we ever get into a situation where we run out of health potions we can go ahead and use this and heal to max HP. It is very, very powerful. One thing I also forgot to mention about the Blasphemous Blade, every time you kill an enemy, you actually get HP back. For every single enemy that you take down, you will get health back. And if you play this correctly, you will probably never have to use an HP potion ever. What I love about faith builds, there's just so many different possibilities depending on which enemy which boss you are fighting there's so many different incantations that you can use to buff up your defense offense just make you more viable overall which is why i love faith so much you have so many different options here for example if you are fighting a boss that does magic damage you can use the barrier of gold incantation which greatly increases magic damage negation not just for yourself but for your allies as well same thing goes with the gold lightning fortification which greatly increases lightning resistance and there's many more incantations similar to these i want to show you guys my wondrous physic i think it's really important so here you can see here we have the flame shrouding crack tier and we have the opaline bubble tier if you didn't think there was any other ways for us to boost our fire attacks you are definitely wrong because the flame shrouding crack tier temporarily boosts fire attacks so that's an additional boost to our fire damage the blasphemous blade making it do even more damage also the opaline bubble tier is very good because it's pretty much going to make us unkillable it's going to significantly negate damage received on top of the defense that we already have on this build you guys i cannot stress enough how powerful this build is if you haven't had the chance to make a faith build yet and you want to try it out i highly advise going with strength and faith please use this video as a guide. If you found this video helpful in any way, shape, or form, please leave a thumbs up. I would appreciate it a lot. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel to see more Elden Ring videos just like this one, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.